We got it. Okay, this is Abdu Sitarov, who was in clear first when the day started against Jordan Van Forest, who won the tournament two years ago. They played a Sicilian. Oh, yeah, I forgot he won. Okay, time and awe variation, I guess. And he played queen f3, which is, I mean, there's many moves. Uh, probably queen d2 is the most common. Bishop e2 is common. a3 is even played. But queen f3 is cool. Okay, recommended by Andrew Carklins, probably. He likes to play queen f3 against all Sicilians. So he would like it here. Okay, put it in h, h5. That's, I don't really know the theory of this opening, so that move just seems odd to me. But obviously, if black just develops normally, I guess white's going to play g4, g5. So black is stopping that. Okay, long castle, b5, queen g3, offering a queen trade, which black accepts. And to me, this looks... To me, I'm not... I, I don't know this, is, this variation is silly. This looks pretty bad for black to me. Black doesn't have any development. I don't like his H pawn on H5 here. I'd rather have it on H7. Seems weak. And um, I, I don't know where to put this king. I don't know where to put the bishop. So I, I don't like this position. And the engine agrees. It says white has a nice advantage here. So I think the opening worked out in Nor Nordebeck's favor. However, it's clear by the time usage that Jordan is like sort of in his prep, I guess. It's not good prep because the position's not very good. You can see he has more time than he started with. Okay, bishop c5, that's the engine move. And in this position, the common Sicilian moves like a4 or f4 are the engine moves, and Norderbeck immediately tried to punish this h5 pawn by playing g4. Seems reasonable. Bishop b7, ignoring him. Always ignore your opponent. And here, white made a very poor decision, in my opinion. He should just take this pawn. And the engine line, which gives white a slight advantage. And basically, if you're playing g4 to then not take the pawn, yeah. it's like, why, why'd you play g4? Is to play rook takes, rook takes, pawn takes, knight f6. And the idea is we're going to try to attack this pawn. We're attacking this pawn. And knight g4 is also annoying. So the engine says after bishop e2, stopping knight g4 and protecting the h-pawn, that white is up like 0.5 or 0.6. Okay, white's slightly better. And he, instead he played a move that I don't like. What move do I not like? Um, I don't know. F3? Yeah, played F3. Yeah. yeah, the engine hates that move. And now it actually prefers black's position. But I must warn you... Uh, neither player was cheating this game, which is evident from the moves they made. Uh, the engine hates like half their moves. It doesn't like the way they played. Obviously, Von Forest isn't one of the top 10, 20 players in the world, and he has black. And Norderbeck is about to win the biggest tournament of his life. He's been in first the whole tournament. The tournament has Magnus and Wesley and Fabiano, and those aren't even the good players. So Abdu Sitarov has a lot of pressure on him from, you know, potentially winning a big tournament and such such pressure makes you play move like f3 terrible f3 is bad because it weakens the defense of the bishop on e3 too the knight's pin now okay now in this position the engine wants to play h4 which seems very reasonable but he played g6 which the engine does not like then knight f5 the engine doesn't like that either but i like it because it's knife f5 notice the attack on the bishop here forcing black to trade bishops Knight takes, king e7, reasonable. Now, white should definitely take this to give black an isolated h-pawn. And the engine still prefers white, but he played bishop e2. d6 is good. g5. The engine hates g5. And you know g5 is a bad move because the best move for black here is f6. You should never let your opponent play f6 and it's good. And he did play f6. Okay, now f4 is correct. This is good. Now black has solid control of the e5 square. And he played knight e5. The engine says this position's about equal. Rook d4 is good. Rook d8 is okay. 
And in this position, and in many positions before and after, white should play a4, which he should really play after rook d4, because b4 is not possible anymore, because it's not... You know. So you really want to play a4 here and attack these weak pawns and give them an isolated pawn and so forth. In fact, the engine doesn't like rook d8 because of a4. But Abdu Sitarov doubled his rooks. And then h4 was played. Again, he should play knight c6, attacking the rook, stopping a4. White should play a4, but he played knight g4. He played knight c6, attacking the rook. Probably even stronger is knight f7, attacking the g5 pawn. But knight c6 is fine. What's funny is the engine even doesn't like this move. It wants to play rook d3 because the rook has some scope here. Here it's just like you can't mm -hmm. move anywhere. But he must have thought black would try to do some kind of repetition. <laughs> he didn't want to draw. Yeah. So he played rook d2. And in this position, rook h5 is correct. This pawn is very hard to defend. Then white correctly played e5 because he can't just be a pawn down for nothing. So he's fighting. Notice the knight is defending e5 and d8. So you can't win a pawn. This would be a blunder because your d-pawn's pinned. So you can't do that. And this doesn't win a pawn because I can... Well, actually, this is a blunder too. This move is good. I was going to take the rook first, but this makes more sense tactically. And then after here, we amazingly have this move because this rook is hanging. Check. Then all the rooks are hanging. Then after king here, we take this rook. And this is winning for white. White's up a, a pawn, and he has a passed pawn, and pawns are all weak, and so forth. Okay, <clears throat> so e5 is a good move. And now, let me refresh. It's like brokechess.com again, like I always do. And I have to flip the board. I remain confident. Okay. So after... I didn't go back far enough. After e5... Black played d5, which is correct. And now in this position, white played the best move. It's the coolest looking move, too. That's more important than being the best move. Knight e4. Taking advantage of the pin again and defending the pawn. And now both knights have good squares. Mm -hmm. And what's funny is black played the best move here, setting up for the next game. Bishop c8. Not a move I would probably consider, <clears throat> but engine approved. Okay, in this position, the best move is very hard to find because Abdu Sitarov is not French. So he didn't retreat. Knight f2 is the best move, retreating the knight and attacking the rook. But instead he went forward, knight f6. And what's funny is after rook h8, setting up for the next game, black's position looks ridiculous. And it says black has a big advantage here. It likes black a lot. Mm -hmm. And the main reason is this pawn's hanging. So if I take that, I win a center pawn, and I get rid of the defense here, and I'm threatening to take the knight because my, knight is, my knight's defending my rook here. So I, this is a threat, and this is a threat. White's actually overextended, which is funny. Okay, so he took on g8. He took back. He put his other knight on f6. He went back to d8, and he said, how are you going to defend your pawn? Good question. And he played h3, which is a blunder, according to the engine. It says just taking the pawn is really good for black. Really hates this move. Yeah, and this is a mistake which was not taken advantage of. So you'll notice in this position, I can move my bishop and defend my pawn here. Yeah. Okay, and what he should have done, which would have given him a good position, is bishop to <clears throat> d3, defending his pawn and attacking the g6 pawn. Oh, uh, yeah. And how do you defend the g6 pawn? The answer is fries. You can play king f7, but after rook f1, you're going to be walking into discovered check. So the engine says this is equal. And instead of doing that, bishop d3, he played bishop g4, which is a very bad move. I mean, the bishop's, what, the bishop's not attacking anything here. Okay, rook h4. And now white doesn't have any targets. The one target was the g6 pawn, which I could have attacked. 
these pawns can't really be attacked by a piece, they're defended. This pawn's weak and this pawn's weak. And the open H file, black has control of. The open F file is blocked. And you would argue this is a great knight. What's funny is the knight's trapped. The knight can't move without being captured. Mm -hmm. And it's blocking the F file. So white can't double up on the bubble up and play rook F7 check and win. Because his knight's blocking him. And he can't move his knight because it has nowhere to go. And white has to babysit these pawns because they're weak. So black actually has an advantage here. B3 is a bad move. Rook H8, king B2, as if nothing is happening. And yeah, white, white can't attack anything because this bishop is so stupid on G4. And he's, rook is babysitting this weak pawn. It's funny how the knight's trapped. It can't move anywhere. Yeah, because if at a glance, mm -hmm. it looks nice. Right. It's like down in there. Okay, now the knight's going to go to F7. Knight D, it's an excellent move. Then when the knight's on F7, attacks both pawns. Mm. And that's, according to the engine, that's a horrible blunder. And now you can't defend both pawns. C3 is actually the engine move. And finally, blacks up a pawn and has up two pass pawns. Pass G pawn, pass D pawn. You notice white's rooks have never gotten active. The rooks have always been blocked. White tries to get a passed pawn. Now white finally activates his rook, but in doing so, he loses all of his pawns. Now that he can't save this pawn, he tries to. And then he resigned because white's up, black's up three pawns and there's there's a check. You could check here, or you could check here, but there's, there's no more checks. And then this pawn's gonna queen. So that was a very poor game from Abdu Satorov because he had several chances to get an advantage or equal. And people just say last round jitters. He's young and he's playing maybe the lowest rated player in the tournament. Yeah, he's the lowest rated player in the tournament. Abdu Satorov has white. He has a good position out of the opening and middle game. He messes it up. Then he gets a good position again. So he was given he was given chances to do well this game and he and he... This is the only game he lost. Was Jordan um, previously above 2,700? Mm, maybe. Kamer's lower rated? Damn, he got me. Let me see. 26. On, on the ratings they have listed, which I'm not saying they're accurate, uh, Kamer's 2,696 and Jordan is 2,681. But it could be on the live rating list that you're right. Mm -hmm. Von Forey's highest rated in attractiveness? Uh, yeah, maybe. Only Karen knows, and she ain't telling. I don't know. <laughs> they say he looks like Ashton Kutcher. You know, I'm not a big Kutcher fan. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to look up his Oh, Jordan Von Forey's. Mm. Make sure it's not his brother. Yeah, well. D E N Van. Yeah, there, it, it auto it auto did it for you. Mm -hmm. It knew what you were doing. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, nice looking in that picture. Now where would I go to see the peak? Yeah, probably you're at the right place. Right here, right here. Yeah, maybe. <clears throat> yeah, he was over barely. Twenty-seven fourteen. That's good enough. Let me see what this one says. Twenty-seven fifteen. Ooh, even better. Yeah, on the graph. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about. That. I just had to satisfy that curiosity. <laughs>